Hey Minecrafters out there, my name is Fape and welcome to the Redstone Mine. You heard right, that the, the Redstone Mine is a place where I plan to do some tutorials soon. So what's all that here about? Let's head in. What? It's a trap? Shoot all three targets within a certain time and you're free. So let's see, we got three fence posts there. So let's see what will happen. Oh, very nice. And it will open again. Same here. Okay, I suppose I have to shoot all three at the same time. So let's try this. One. Ah, missed the second one. Okay, let me try one more time. And a one, and a two, and a three. We did it! We are free! Thank you, mister. Alright guys, I have to admit, I had to skip a few tries, but we did it! We are free now! That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye! <laughs> Just kidding guys, of course. I uh, developed, as you can see, a arrow detector which resets itself and that's how it looks like. Of course there's uh, three of them and uh, I will show you uh, for one example how it exactly works. So let me head over there and I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, here we are. You can see the fence post back there and if I shoot him it will go up again and the piston will be in the way for a short time so I can't shoot through and then it will reset itself and then I can all over again and it's a pretty small design and it uses some of the 1.3 features so I'm actually in the snapshot 12th week 26A and um, yeah this mechanism is based on the, the new pressure plates detecting arrows and they actually detect arrows when the block below the pressure plate is hit in the upper half. You can see there it was activated, there it won't. So you have to shoot in the upper ha uh, half of the block. And of course as you all know you can also put pressure plates on fences and there it will exact, uh, work exactly the same top half, let me get this arrow, bottom half doesn't activate it. Normally the arrow gets stuck and the pressure plate will be activated until the arrow is removed by hand or by despawning. But I uh, searched for a way to um, prevent that and make it self-resetting and therefore you may know that it is possible to move a block under a pressure plate and it doesn't drop. So that's very nice but when we are getting an arrow into this block and we push it away the arrow will still be in this block and most of the time still activate the piston. So that's a problem that can be solved by using a fence. When you are pushing a fence to the side with an arrow in it the arrow is most likely to drop down or be pushed with it. So that's the basic idea behind all what I did. When the arrow gets stuck on the fence and is pushed back in, the pressure plate will drop. There mustn't be any connection to a block surrounding it. And that is also possible with a new feature of 1.3. As you may know, you can place pressure plates and all rest and stuff on half slabs, but the fence won't connect to the half slab, so you can use it to push the fence away without connecting it to um, any block, and uh, so the arrow has to pass this little gap here in between, and when it's in this gap, it will just fall down. So as you can see you have to have uh, one space below it and then the arrow will drop down and 
you can use the pressure plate again. And I figured out a way to make it a hundred percent certain to make the arrow drop. And now I'll show you how to build such a thing. So here we are. First of all you wanna place your fence one above ground and put a pressure plate on it. Then you want to put a piston behind there which gets activated when this pressure plate gets activated, you can see. And you will need a half slab next to it and a normal piston which is able to push the half slab in. And you also want a normal piston with one space apart from the fence gate. You want a block on your sticky piston and a torch here. You want a block here with a redstone dust on it. Let me get it. Which will get activated when this piston will push the block above this torch. And from here on you can just connect this and the other side will be connected through here. You need three repeaters to get the timing right and with two on four ticks and one on two ticks is the the fastest I, I found out is possible but maybe there are some improvements that could be made. I'm not sure about it and of course it's not the most compact way, it's just the way I did it. I guess there are more compact ways. But uh, you have to figure these out yourself. So let's make some kind of a target ring over here. So you can see just the fence behind it. And that's pretty all you need for the, for the basic version. Let me get my bow out and let's try. You see, the arrow will drop down and will so be out of the reach of this pressure plate and this retro pressure plate will get deactivated. Another feature I did was putting a piston down here which will close this little hole off so you can't shoot while the mechanism is resetting and that's simple by doing two uh, holes here, redstone in here, here and you have to block it up from that one and that's basically all it needs to get a nice self-resetting error detector. So I hope you enjoyed kind of my first tutorial thingy I did and uh, maybe you find some use for it. Another idea I had is just to build two of them next to each other and hook them up to a counter and you can just play with some friends who shoots the most targets in a minute or something, a certain time limit. So that's another possibility I had in mind and maybe you guys ca can come up with something else that is much more impressing. Anyways, hope this tutorial helped you and I like to see you next time in the ironstone mine or the redstone mine. Bye bye guys and seriously don't be daft, play some Minecraft.